Hello. So the we need to know is taking a long time on the recording because I'm giving a lot of extra input. The section that students missed the most was dividing with decimals. So we're going to do that as its own separate video. So if this is the only section that you need, ta-da, you just need to see this video. So we're going to start off by remembering our mnemonic. We're going to think of dad, mom, sister, brother. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. But before you subtract, you're done with, before you're done with that step, you have to check to make sure that the difference is less than the divisor. The number that you have after you subtract is less than the number you were trying to divide by. Okay, so we're going to do our underlining. Does 5 go into 2? No. Does 5 go into 25? Yes. So you're going to have a digit here. There is no decimal in the divisor, so you're going to bring the decimal straight up and you're going to have another digit here. Now we could add more digits if we needed to add more zeros, but for now it looks to me like the answer is going to be a digit, a decimal point, and another digit. So now let's try to divide. 5 into 25 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Subtract, you get 0. That's less than 5, so we did great. Brother can bring down the next number. 5 into 5 is 1. Terminating decimal, there's nothing left. 5.1 is the answer. So we didn't try to divide, we divided. Here, a lot of kids were having trouble with figuring out which number goes inside. So we had a mnemonic called in and out. And I thought this was brilliant, but I still know that kids are having some trouble. So if in and out doesn't work for you, you can do this also. First number goes under. What do I mean under? I mean that under the division sign for uh, the little shelter division sign. So this is an easy problem. 3.6 is going to go on the inside, 12 on the outside. For decimal dance, the song goes like this. The section part goes. Uh, and remember that division can have two faces. Come on, baby, do the decimal dance. If there's just one decimal and it's on the inside, move the decimal straight up and then normal divide. Well, that's the same application here. There's just one decimal on the inside of the division symbol. We're going to bring it straight up and normal divide. So does 12 go into 3? No. 12 go into 36? Yes. Three times. The answer is... Point three. If you like to have the zero in front, it would be 0 0.3. Now we're getting to the second face. All three of these have the second face of decimal dividing. Or if there are two, meaning two decimal points. If the divisor has a decimal point in it, the dividend has a decimal point in it, and both of them are going to have to move in the same direction, the same number of times, to make the, div the divisor into a whole number. So first off, we got a dilemma that's different. Here we have 93. If a number has no decimal, the decimal goes behind the number. Now, we're going to move both decimals so that this divisor becomes a whole number. We don't want it to be 0.3. We don't want it to be 3 pennies. We need it to be $3, three whole numbers. So we're going to move over 1 two times. Get rid of your old decimal. Same goes. One, two times. Decimal's over here now, fill in with two zeros. This means we need to make our line a little longer. And especially with zeros, you want to be very mindful of your place values and where you're putting things. So I'm going to show you carefully the underlining. Does three go into nine? Yeah. 3 is less than 9. So you have a digit on top of the 9 and a digit on top of the 3 and a digit on top of this 0 and this 0. If you don't have 4 digits to the answer, it's wrong. And the decimal place would come up straight behind it, but we don't walk around saying, I have $7 and. The decimal point is like the word and, and we don't finish a sentence with the word and. If there's nothing else that we need to do, we don't even need it at the end. So let's just not even put it up, but we know that it would go straight up if we needed it. 3 goes into 9, 3 times. 3 goes into 3, 1 time. Oh, and you have nothing left. Uh-oh, but you have two more spaces. What do you fill in with? Yep, fill in with zeros. 
The answer is 3,100. Anything other than that is wrong. 3,100 is the only acceptable answer. Okay, number 39. Again, you're thinking which one goes on the inside, so you can think in and out. Or you can think first number goes under. Pretend like it's a race, and somehow or other, this is the cool space to be. And so whoever ran there first gets to be there. Now, this is not a whole number, so you're going to move it one time to make it into a whole number. So you're going to move this one one time to make it into a whole number. And then it goes straight up. Uh, it's kind of crowded. Let me try that again. Now, does 2 go into 1? No. 16? Yes. We have a digit here, a digit here, and a digit here. Does 2 go into 16? Yes. How many times? 8. 8 times 2 is 16. Subtract. You get 0. Bring down the 4. 2 goes into 4 2 times. Subtract. You get 0. Bring down, oops, forgot the arrow. Bring down the 5. 2 goes into 5 2 times. Uh-oh. We have leftovers. That's okay. We always can, with decimals, add an extra zero back here. I'll do it in green so you can see it. You can add as many zeros back there as you'd like. Mm. Can't see it as well as if it were red. So we're adding that, and when we add that, we get an extra di uh, digit for our quotient, the answer to a division problem. So we're going to bring down this zero now that we just created, put it next to the one, and now two goes into ten five times. And it is a terminating decimal. And you're done. 8.225 is the answer. 8.225. Okay, number 40. Same idea as we had with 38. Try it out on your own. I'm going to scooch this over a little bit. We already have it set up. We're going to need to... Move this decimal point three times. One, two, three. So I have to move the other three times also. But it doesn't even have one yet. So first I have to make it appear. If a number has no decimal, the decimal goes behind the number. And now I have to move it three times. One, two, three. Fill in with three zeros. Now with the underlining. This is 52. But I can think about it like 50. Uh, 52. Does 52 go into 1? No. 15? No. 156? Yes. So I'm going to have a digit here and a digit on top of each of the zeros that we just created. Again, we don't need to bring the decimal straight up. We're hoping that there won't be anything left after this. But if we had to, we could. But we don't end a sentence with and, so we're not going to bring the decimal up to the end unless we need it. Okay, so 52 into 156. Many of you probably will be able to see that's three times, but in case you're stuck, you can always cover up and you say, five goes into 15, how many times? Three times. That answer will always be right. Well, that answer will be right about 90% of the time. If you have the answer that you think it's going to be three, sometimes the answer will be um you won't be able to multiply and, and subtract the number down here. It'll be too much and you can't even subtract. And we use the analogy of that being like a party where you ran out of food. So if you ran out of food, you should have invited less people. So if you multiply by three, because that's the number that you think you got by the estimating skills, and it didn't work out, this number here was maybe 184. Well, that's more than 156. Instead of three guests, you need to take it down and make it down to two guests. So you'd erase and you'd change it. What if when you subtracted with three, you had too many leftovers? Well, the same analogy for the party works. If you had too many leftovers, you should have invited one more person. So instead of three, the right answer would be four. You just erase and you fix it. So you modify depending on whether you can subtract or if you have too many leftovers. So you can think about a party. But we decided that 52 into 156 would be like 5 into 15 three times. 3 times 2 is 6, 5 times 2 is 15, that's perfect, 0. We have nothing here, but the answer is not 3. We've got to fill in those extra spaces, so the answer is actually 3,000. 
and that's it. If you've got these skills down, if you can master where the decimal point goes, how to handle adding extra zeros at the end, how to move the decimal to make the divisor into a whole number, then you will understand and be able to do all decimal work. doesn't matter if it's on a test or if it's to calculate um, if you can be able to purchase a new home or a car. The possibilities are endless. Go for it. Thanks.